Today is a member's business debate on motion number 9792 in the name of Kenneth Gibson on tackling the stigma of epilepsy through education. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I call on Mr Gibson, Kenneth Gibson, to open the debate. Uh, seven minutes, please, Mr Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by thanking so many members for signing the motion to make this evening's debate possible, and Alana Parker, Epilepsy Consortium Scotland, and Alice Strife of Quarriers for their briefings. As convener of the cross-party group on epilepsy, I have learned a great deal about this condition over the years, much of it surprising. As treatments and medications have changed and improved, understanding among the general population has remained steadfastly low, and with this lack of understanding, from some quarters has come stigmatisation and a feeling of exclusion for those who live with epilepsy. Indeed, a 2012 uh, research report by Quarriers entitled We Need to Talk About Epilepsy found that in terms of attitudes to epilepsy, one in two respondents felt others treated them differently after they had revealed that they have the condition. Whilst many people may not consider being thought, a uh, thought of as different as a huge issue, half of children aged 8 to 15 stated that this was the worst part of having epilepsy, and only 38% chose the actual physical seizures. Epilepsy is the most common serious neurological disorder on the planet. In the UK, 600,000 people live with epilepsy, and 54,000 of these are in Scotland. Epilepsy is best defined as repeated seizures, not just one, that start in the brain. Epilepsy Scotland explains that a brief disturbance in the brain's normal electrical activity causes the nerve cells to fire off random signals. The result is like an electrical storm that causes a temporary overload of the brain. There are many different kinds of seizure. Some end in seconds, while others may last several minutes. People might lose their awareness of what is happening or where they are during a seizure. They may lose consciousness altogether. Epilepsy can be caused if brain tissue is not properly formed or has been damaged by an infection or head injury. However, in around 7 out of 10 cases, epilepsy has no identifiable cause, although it is often thought that there may be a genetic link, an issue which we debated uh, last year and which Scotland uh, leads the world in research. Whilst a number of third sector organisations such as Quarriers and Epilepsy Scotland offer incredible support to those who live with epilepsy, a lack of understanding and stigmatisation surrounding condition can make life extremely difficult for those uh, with epilepsy. Uh, people often choose to hide the fact they have the condition for fear of being misunderstood or thought of uh, uh, and treated as somewhat different from the rest of society. Hiding a part of themselves and having their real needs neglected is one reason why people living with epilepsy are more likely to develop a mental health problem. Tragically, people with epilepsy are five times more likely to commit suicide than the general population. The We Need to Talk About Epilepsy report, which I referenced earlier, provided other interesting and shocking figures in relation to the experiences of those living with epilepsy, how they feel they're treated and viewed. The poll found that more than two-thirds of those interviewed admit they worry that what a member of the public would say or do if they had a seizure. A third admit concern over a seizure in public uh, may lead to anxiety about whether to leave the house. Uh, Two-fifths avoid telling people they have epilepsy. 60% say epilepsy is an impact on relationships with friends and family, while more than half said it has affected intimate or sexual relationships. Nearly all those polled, 94%, feel that most people don't know a lot about epilepsy, with more than three quarters claiming the general public makes incorrect assumptions about how epilepsy affects them. A quarter revealed they had been accused of faking or exaggerating a seizure, and sickeningly, some 7% have even been filmed or photographed while at their most vulnerable during a seizure. This lack of awareness is not only upsetting for those with epilepsy, but can also have serious medical consequences. Sarah Brannan, one of the people who told her story as part of the study, explained that many people would simply ignore her or even step over her when she was having a seizure, assuming she was drunk or on drugs. On another occasion, Sarah was kicked out of a shop after asking for a glass of water to take her seizure prevention medication because the shopkeeper assumed she was a drug addict. In my role as convener of the CPG in epilepsy, I wrote to the education departments of all 32 local authorities to ask what first aid and epilepsy awareness training was given to pupils and staff in their area uh, to ensure that those with epilepsy would be in good hands should they require the assistance of classmates or staff. Whilst health and wellbeing is covered as part of the curriculum for e excellence, epilepsy awareness is not compulsory nor is it a compulsory element in the student-teacher training programme. Indeed, it is at the discretion of head teachers to decide which health topics will be explored. 
As a result, responses from local authorities were something of a mixed bag, with many simply, simply offering general first aid training and only providing specific epilepsy training where it was deemed specifically necessary. However, some local authorities, such as East Lothian, advised that all staff could access epilepsy awareness courses. The City of Edinburgh Council also runs a Severe Allergies, Severe Asthma and Epilepsy Awareness Management and Educational Establishments course at least once a month and twice on in-service days. So whilst it's clear that councils must work within time and budget constraints, it is important that much more emphasis is placed on epilepsy awareness and training, and indeed can be, as East Lothian and Edinburgh have shown, especially when seizures can develop any age and occur at any time of day or night. I therefore welcome Epilepsy Consortium Scotland's call for local authorities to consider making epilepsy awareness a compulsory element of all first aid training so that school staff are better, better equipped to assist children who are newly diagnosed or indeed yet to be diagnosed. And as I indicated early on, 54,000 people in Scotland have this condition, so it is not uh, rare. And I would imagine that most teachers will certainly see it during their life, th th their career. Um, when I was a pupil, I remember someone uh, had a seizure in my class. No one knew he, he uh, suffered from epilepsy, and it was quite uh, shocking for us. In terms of pupil engagement, I'm pleased to note that progress continues to be made towards the launch of the Stamp Out Stigma campaign, which has been developed in line with Curriculum for Excellence by members of the Scottish Youth Parliament in conjunction with Epilepsy Connections, Education Scotland, Scottish Epilepsy Initiative and Young Epilepsy. This campaign will provide materials for staff and pupils seeking to find out more about epilepsy, the condition and the effects, and also first-hand epilepsy from people living with it. These materials will be made available on the GLOW site for staff and pupils to access. I am aware that classrooms will soon be able to sign up for epilepsy discussion sessions, and these will undoubtedly help to normalise public attitudes to epilepsy and reduce the social stigma of the condition. Presiding officer, I would again like to thank uh, members for taking the time uh, to, to sign in my motion and also for those in advance who will be participating in this evening's debate and also to thank uh, the Minister for speaking on behalf of the Government. I hope this debate will prove informative to members and they will encourage the local authorities and schools to get in the, involved in the Stamp Out Stigma campaign in order that we can gradually move social attitudes towards epilepsy into the 21st century. Many thanks. I now call on George Adam to be followed by Cara Hilton. Thank you, President Officer, and also thank Kenneth Gibson for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. Uh, I know from his work in the CPG and epilepsy how, how involved he is in the actual deal of helping people with this condition and also the f interested in the fact that it's 54,000 people in Scotland that have the condition and I think it's something that was brought up. It's like a condition when I, I think you were here presiding also before when we talked about multiple sclerosis in Scotland, there was 100,000 people so it just shows you it's another neurological condition that uh, people in Scotland uh, obviously have uh, issues with as well. But one of the things that Mr Gibson brought up was the stigma uh, that is attached to it. and many young people seem to have an issue with it. I know for a fact that my own niece uh, has uh, epilepsy and uh, she never used to talk about it to such an extent that she didn't want anyone else to know about it. Very similar to some of the findings that Quarriers brought up in their survey was that young people actually felt as if they were actually treated differently by uh, people within education or anywhere else because of if they mentioned that they had epilepsy. And I think that's where when Mr Gibson talks about the training for uh, in health and safety or may, first aid training for teachers. It may be something that the authorities, the 32 authorities, should have a look at because we can't have this kind of patchwork ideal of uh, being able to, well, in some of the cases, as Mr Gibson mentioned, the fact that, you know, there was only one authority, I think it was said, that it actually did have that training and offer. And I think these are one of the things because can you imagine the panic in a classroom situation if a teacher, if something like that happens and the teacher's unable to do anything about it. You know, apart from anything, I think it would probably be down to local authorities to ensure that their member of staff had that ability to help uh, that young person should, should in that situation. But one of the things that was mentioned earlier on was the fact that uh, Quarriers, uh, obviously based in Bridge of Weir, not in my constituency, presiding officer, but next door, my colleagues, uh, Derek Mackay's, but their actual uh, Scottish Epilepsy Centre, a £6.4 million centre that's in Glasgow, and uh, it's obviously there to help families that are dealing with this uh, condition on a long-term basis. And I think, as I've said, in other debates, it's not just about the actual support and uh, everything else. It's about
about making sure that they can feel better about it. Just being able to talk to someone a lot of the time can make quite a big difference when you're dealing with something like this. Because I'm, I'm concerned. I'm also thinking about my own, uh, well, she's now in her 20s, but my own niece. She actually was going to, at one point, try to lie to the DLA, the, uh, DVLA about her licence so that she could get a driving licence because she had epilepsy. And there was obviously a problem with that. And she was informed in no certain terms that she wasn't going to do that. But, you know, it just shows you the lengths that young people will go to to actually uh, hide this kind of thing. But one of the things the Curriculum for Excellence offers is, presiding officers, an opportunity to overcome that stigma. You know, the whole point of the Curriculum for Excellence is to, uh, for young people to be able to get involved and uh, explore different parts of the curriculum and come to the conclusions themselves. And I think uh, the, the pack that was talked about with the Stamp Out Stigma campaign and working within the GLOW system with the available for teachers, it gives them the opportunity to access that information and it ensures that they can actually uh, be able to uh, teach it and give uh, young people, move them away from the, the ignorance of not knowing exactly what uh, they're dealing with here. And I think that's one of the things we have to get over is uh, to make sure when we're dealing with just about anything is to make sure that people are young people are fully informed in some cases nowadays we actually find that i know for a fact a lot of young people we interact with are probably a lot better informed in a lot of these issues than a lot of us are but uh, i think it's quite important that we we've got that available in the curriculum of excellence and it gives the teachers and education the opportunity to do this so just in closing presiding officer i'd like to thank uh, Ke Kenneth Gibson, uh, Gibson again, I can't get used to using his Sunday name, uh, for bringing this to the, the Chamber and I support him and I will continue to support him in all of his campaigns to start, uh, stamp out the stigma with regards to epilepsy in Scotland. Very good, many thanks. Now call on Cara Hilton to be followed by Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I begin by thanking Kenneth Gibson on securing this debate and reducing the stigma of, edu of epilepsy through education? Um, epilepsy has got a huge impact on people's lives, as we've already heard. It affects 1% of the population, and many of us will know a friend or a family member that's affected. For me, it's my mum who was di diagnosed with epilepsy six years ago, but had been suffering from what she calls funny feelings for a couple of years before that. She was stunned to be told that she had epilepsy, but she's now on medication, she's seizure-free, and most importantly for her, she's back at the driving wheel and she can get herself around and about. Um, epilepsy is a condition that varies considerably with at least 40 different types of seizures. But while people's experience of this condition varies, those affected have got one thing in common, because every single day people with epilepsy are experiencing stigma, prejudice and discrimination. And having uh, epilepsy can be a lonely and isolating experience, destroying confidence and self-esteem. Research by the Quarriers, which colleagues have already highlighted, has found that 55% of sufferers say that people started treating them differently when they found out about their epilepsy. Many keep quiet, not just because of the prejudice that they face, but because of the general public ignorance about epilepsy. When my mum first found out that she had epilepsy, in common with 43% of sufferers, she tried to keep quiet about her condition. When she did feel brave enough to speak out, she found that many people simply changed the subject, moving on to talk about other subjects like the weather instead. Others would panic, worried that she would have a seizure at any minute, wondering if they would cope if she did. But, and is it any wonder that so many people with epilepsy suffer in silence, when a shocking 28% of epilepsy sufferers have been laughed at as a result of having a seizure, when a third of epilepsy sufferers worry about leaving the house in case they have a seizure in public, when 72% say that their condition has affected their career prospects, and when 7% say that they've been photographed or filmed while having a seizure. Indeed, a former chief executive of the Quarriers said, it appears that we're stuck in the dark ages over how to treat people living with epilepsy. So we've got huge challenges ahead. And I think it's unacceptable that in 21st century Scotland, people living with epilepsy are living in fear of ridicule and discrimination. And things are not much better for the fight between 5,000 and 7,000 children and young people with active epilepsy. Indeed, a survey of school children found that over half of them, for about over half of school children, being thought of as different or being teased by others was the worst part of epilepsy, not the actual se seizures themselves. And I was quite shocked to read in the excellent briefing provide, provided us for us today by Alana Parker that 31% of young adults were concerned that epilepsy might be contagious. 
This really does highlight how much more needs to be done to raise awareness about epilepsy in our schools, in our workplaces and in our communities. And I would like to take this opportunity to commend the Stamp Out Stigma Awareness Raising Campaign, which will provide study materials on GLOW for class teachers and secondary school pupils. The campaign has been developed in line with the Curriculum of Excellence uh, for mem by members of the Scottish Youth Parliament, and I hope that when it rolls out in the autumn, it will go a long way towards raising awareness in our schools, improving support for young children and adults with epilepsy, and perhaps most importantly, changing people's attitudes and perceptions. And I hope that classes in my constituency and across Scotland will sign up for it. But a big concern for me, and Kenneth has already highlighted it, is the lack of adequate first aid training for both pupils and staff in our schools, with many schools waiting until a child is diagnosed before putting training measures in place. Given that seizures can develop at any age and at any time, surely it would be better to ensure that every single school has a first aider that is trained to deal with epilepsy. And I therefore welcome the Minister's comments on what action the Scottish Government can take to move this forward so that staff in all our local authorities and in all our schools are better able to assist children with epilepsy. I would also welcome the Minister's comments on what measures the Scottish Government plan to take to raise public awareness and to address the stigma that continues to undermine everyone of every age affected. Uh, the CME campaign has been really effective in tackling mental health stigma. I wonder if the Minister will consider supporting a similar campaign to address the stigma of epilepsy. Finally, I hope that during Nap National Epilepsy Week, together we can go some way towards reversing the negative perceptions that surround epileps epilepsy. It's time to stamp out the stigma. And thank you again to Kenneth Gibson for securing this debate here today. Thanks so much. Now call on Liz Smith to be followed by Alison McInnes. Four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Could I uh, thank uh, Kenny Gibson uh, for bringing this debate uh, and also to uh, congratulate him on all the work that he's done in this Parliament over a long period of time on, on this topic. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, before I go any further, could I just apologise for a slightly earlier departure for uh, constituency reasons? I can't stay till uh, the end of the debate, and so I apologise to Mr Gibson for that. Uh, the three previous speakers have eloquently described uh, just how much epilepsy affects the lives of so many people. Uh, it is uh, something uh, when one in 97 uh, actually ends up with uh, epileptic fits and the majority of these uh, people managing their condition, uh, it can be extremely difficult and it's been highlighted uh, how particularly difficult it can be for uh, younger people who not just because of the uh, medical challenges that, that they face uh, obviously have this uh, problem uh, from some of stigma and discrimination. And on a, a personal note, uh, I was lucky enough to teach in a school uh, where epilepsy was well recognised and where uh, teachers, I think, had a good understanding of what it might involve. But I think the call from Mr Gibson uh, this evening uh, as to what the GTC and teacher training can do is, is a very important one because there is no question in my mind that it is essential that there is much better understanding, not just from staff, but from uh, pupils themselves. Now, in preparing for uh, this evening's debate, I looked over the debate that Kenny Gibson uh, secured, I think it was uh, two years ago, uh, on this very same subject. And it st struck me then uh, that there were comments from uh, David Ford, Young Epilepsy's chief executive, who said that there had to be a major shift in awareness and understanding if we are going to improve the situation, because we know that young people uh, with epilepsy are quite frankly getting a raw deal on too many occasions when it comes to education, but obviously uh, to employment and to social interaction. So it's very clear that there is a great deal of work uh, that still needs to be done to change the public attitudes and to raise awareness of, uh, on epilepsy. And can I just congratulate the Epilepsy Consortium uh, Scotland for what was an excellent uh, briefing. And I was very concerned uh, to see in uh, the report, I think it was a survey of uh, over 19,000 adolescents in the general population, about the perceptions, the lack of understanding, the real understanding uh, of what uh, epilepsy uh, involves. There were some uh, who really, uh, I thought, were very far from uh, appreciating exactly what it was. And that shows us the scale of what we have to do. Because it's very hard, I think, to uh, control the initial uh, reaction as a teacher uh, within the classroom of young people uh, if a fellow pupil uh, does have a seizure. And that's out, uh, obviously out of concern for the pupil, but a lot of them don't understand what it is that they have to do. And I welcome the very positive steps uh, which have been taken in uh, places like North Ayrshire. Uh, and so I hope the Minister uh, can take up the point raised by Carol uh, Hilton as to what the government can do in, to help with that guidance and training. Because it's my understanding that 
currently there is a very mixed picture across the local authorities uh, with regard to the formal tra training and the raising uh, awareness. Uh, and I think uh, Kenny Gibson uh, makes a very good point where we have to look at that because it, it seems to be uh, a little difficult in some of the areas. And I think it's very worrying that the evidence points towards epilepsy being uh, perceived in, in a very negative framework, particularly I uh, think George Adam made this point about uh, other uh, diseases uh, have had a better recognition. Uh, and, and that's something that I think um, is very important that we need to take on board as parliamentarians, particularly through debates of this nature, but also through uh, listening to what the uh, very successful uh, lobby groups would tell us. So can I just finish, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, on saying again just how important it is that we all have a much better understanding of the difficulties that are faced by people with epilepsy and their families and their teachers and uh, to say thank you to Kenny Gibson for bringing this debate. Thank you. And thank you. I now call on Alison McInnes, after which we'll move to the Minister for the closing speech. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I add my congratulations to Kenneth Gibson for securing this important debate on this um, Epilepsy Awareness Week. Um, as others have mentioned, Quarriers conducted research in 2012 and published their findings in a report called We Need to Talk About Epilepsy. Introducing their findings, they explain that epilepsy is one of the most serious neurological conditions and it has huge impact on people's lives. There is still a stigma around epilepsy that we have to remove. Many people don't understand epilepsy or know that with the right treatment, those with the condition can lead completely normal lives. The research reveals how the kind of negative attitudes towards epilepsy that are still mired in myth and founded on fear or ignorance can impact heavily on those with epilepsy. Nearly all those surveyed felt that most people don't know a lot about epilepsy, with more than three quarters claiming that the general public makes incorrect assumptions about how epilepsy affects them. And as we've already heard, more than two thirds of those interviewed admit that they do worry about what a member of the public would say or do if they had a seizure. And therefore it's no surprise, although it's sad, that a third of those surveyed admitted concern over a seizure in public, leading to anxiety about whether or not they leave the house. And I think that's dreadful. Just over half of the respondents believe that they have been discriminated against and that, that discrimination towards people with epilepsy is widespread. Um, more than one in four people say they have been ignored or laughed at during or as a result of having a seizure. And people have said that they feel that they're treated differently. And that, of course, leads to a great many people avoiding telling others that they have epilepsy. Since we know that around one in a hundred people in the UK have epilepsy, that's a lot of people struggling to cope on their own. And many of them are teenagers. There's evidence that epilepsy is perceived more negatively by teenagers who don't have epilepsy than other chronic illnesses. An assessment of adolescent perception of chronic conditions found that epilepsy was also perceived to have a more negative social impact, particularly on behavior, honesty, popularity, adeptness at fun and sport. And dishearteningly, significantly more adolescents expressed reluctance to befriend peers with epilepsy. And the most common reason given for that was fear of what to do if a seizure occurred. I can't think of any other long-term illness that leaves people feeling so isolated. People shouldn't feel they need to hide the condition. And that's why the forthcoming Stamp Out Stigma campaign, developed by members of the Scottish Youth Parliament, in conjunction with partners such as Epilepsy Scotland, Epilepsy Connections, Scottish Ep Epilepsy Initiative and Young Epilepsy, has such a potential to make a significant difference to the lives of children and young people who have epilepsy. Those of us in the cross-party working group on ep epilepsy have heard the MSYP, why, I always get that wrong, the MSYPs speak on the need for awareness training. And I want to congratulate them for their determination to develop the campaign. Scotland has 54,000 people with epilepsy. Research has shown that 95% of children with epilepsy struggle at school. Their difficulties are often ignored or misunderstood. I want to see that change. Proper support should be available to everyone and teacher training should include epilepsy awareness. Epilepsy is a condition that manifests itself in many different ways and so teachers and school staff need to better understand how seizures impact on learning. Epilepsy awareness training gives people confidence in dealing with seizures and, of course, information about first aid for epilepsy may even save lives. 
Given that seizures can develop at any age and occur at any time of the day or night, it is, of course, sensible for school first aiders to know about epilepsy and to share this information with colleagues. So I support the Epilepsy Consortium Scotland's call for local authorities to consider making epilepsy awareness a compulsory element of all first aid training so that school staff are better equipped to assist children who are newly diagnosed. In closing, I would pay tribute to the many organisations in supporting people with epilepsy, but I'd like to particularly highlight the work of the Muir Maxwell Trust in trying to combat the stigma of epilepsy. Their Mum on the Run for Epilepsy campaign has been very well received. In fact, so much so that what was to be a temporary programme will now continue indefinitely. The overarching purpose of those talks is to inspire, motivate and encourage young people to overcome challenges as well as provide a greater understanding and awareness of the issues surrounding epilepsy. They are doing a good job. I'd like all of us to play our part in doing what we can to build a future free of stigma. Thanks so much. And I now call on the Minister, Michael Matheson, to close on behalf of the Government. Seven minutes earlier by Minister, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I like others uh, offer my congratulations to Kenny Gibson in securing uh, this most recent uh, member's debate and also to recognise his particular interest in this area and the work that he undertakes through the cross-party group uh, through his uh, good convenership. Uh, I think this, uh, this evening's debate has also uh, provided us with an opportunity to consider a number of issues around how epilepsy is addressed within our society. And I am, like uh, all members in this chamber, saddened uh, when I hear of discrimination or stigmatisation of anyone uh, who lives with an illness or disability. And we have uh, learned from this debate alone about how stigma can impact on uh, people with epilepsy in an, un an unacceptable way. And as, as several members have made reference to, the research which has been carried out on behalf of Quarriers brings home in quite a sobering way just how people's lives can be affected by this uh, condition. And I uh, recognise that all members in this chamber will have a very strong commitment to making Scotland a country where everyone is treated fairly and has a chance to achieve their full potential in all aspects of their lives without being held back by discrimination or stigma because of their own personal health circumstances. And the campaign has been taken forward by uh, members of the Scottish Youth Parliament and stamping out stigma is a very welcome addition to the overall campaign in tackling any form of stigma, stigma within our society. But like all neurological conditions, um, good information is vitally important. Epilepsy, as members recognise, is a, a complex condition and it's also complex because of the misconceptions that it can give rise to misconceptions that I'm sure all members recognise need to be very strongly challenged. And a key part of breaking down these misconceptions is to make sure that people get the opportunity to talk about issues such as epilepsy. And it's not only through encouraging, it's only through encouraging openness and discussion that we can get to the point where we can make progress on these types of issues. Now, I'm aware that there has been very much uh, a lot of valuable work that's been done by stakeholders in providing support and information, as well as uh, raising awareness around epilepsy. For example, the uh, Epilepsy Connection, uh, which is a Scottish charity, uh, one of its principal objectives is to raise awareness of the diversity and the complexity of epilepsy uh, needs. And fundamental to their approach as a charity is the involvement of epilepsy service users in the process of planning and the way in which these services are then delivered. It also has an ethnic minority project supporting people with black and minority ethnic communities, as well as their family, friends and carers. And importantly, uh, Epilepsy Connections aims to raise awareness of the condition, uh, as well as reducing the stigma surrounding epilepsy in ethnic communities. Other charities, including Epilepsy Scotland, have led the way for many years now in combating prejudice that exists, uh, and not least in the workplace that some individuals with epilepsy can experience. The development of the Occupational Health Guide for Epilepsy for Employers, uh, which was launched back in 2011, uh, acknowledges the importance of employers having a readily accessible and up-to-date information about epilepsy issues, including matters such as 
uh, first aid, which is extremely important. And only a few weeks ago, President Officer, I had an opportunity to speak at the National Neurological Advisory Group Learning and Sharing event. And I was very clear at that event that there is a tremendous amount of commitment uh, from all of those within the neurological community in Scotland uh, to make sure that we continue to build on the good progress that has been made in improving service of those with a neurological condition in Scotland, including those with epilepsy. And the National Neurological Advisory Group uh, was formed to take forward work to ensure that we continue to improve the way in which neurological care is provided in Scotland and epilepsy is well represented on that particular group. Now, several members have made reference to the uh, training which teachers uh, receive, and I'm sure members will recognise that local authorities have an extremely important role to play in making sure that individuals with epilepsy receive the right type of support and assistance. We want all children and young people uh, to get support that they need in order to reach their full learning potential. That's why the Additional Support for Learning Act was put into place to make sure that education authorities have a clear duty to identify, provide and to review the additional support needs of their pupils, including someone who may have a condition like epilepsy. Children and young people with disabilities should receive the support they need to overcome any barriers to learning, including the support of additional equipment and services if necessary. And where necessary, schools should also make reasonable adjustments in order to facilitate their pupils' attendance at schools. Now, George Adam, in his contribution, made reference to the benefits that can be gained through the Curriculum for Excellence, which, although we don't prescribe exactly what should be uh, taught to pupils through the Curriculum for Excellence, it provides a unique opportunity to cover conditions, neurological conditions, just like epilepsy, in the work that they take forward with their uh, pupils. There is uh, two particular bodies that have a clear responsibility, a statutory responsibility, uh, to make sure that children with epilepsy get the right support that is required for them. One is our local authorities, and the second is our health boards. Local authorities have a responsibility to ensure that every child reaches his or her full potential, as well as a duty to make reasonable adjustments to ensure that pupil does not suffer a disadvantage as a result of their condition. And an important part of that is for local authorities to make sure that their teachers and their support staff have the right training that is required in order to support their pupils as well. I note that Cara Hilton, in her own contribution, asked for me to consider what action I would take to make sure local authorities have properly trained first aiders in their school. I'm sure, as a member of a local council, the member is aware that that's the responsibility of the local authority to take that forward. And I would encourage the member to contact their own local authority to ensure that they have adequate training in place for their teachers and their support staff in order to meet any pupils' needs. And alongside that, our health boards also have a responsibility to make sure that patients with epilepsy receive the right training and the right type of support for their condition. So, officer, in drawing my remarks to a close, National Epilepsy Week is a good example of epilepsy charities working collectively to raise awareness of epilepsy. And I want to congratulate them on the work that they will undertake over the coming week. I hope, though, I have been able to reassure members that we are working in partnership with a variety of stakeholders to make sure that those living with a neurological condition, such as epilepsy, receive the highest standard of care and support in Scottish society. Many thanks. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.